please pause for the moment of silence. Please stand for the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now for the Texas Pledge. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Teacher finds how a teacher how a teacher finds his passion while traveling across the globe. And we debut a new segment on NHS TV, sharing teachers' most embarrassing moments. And a holiday rivalry faces off in this week's Texas on Main Street. NHS TV Live starts right now. Results from yesterday's election are in. State Proposition 4, which is the constitutional amendment prohibiting the imposition of an individual income tax, passed by a wide margin with yes votes outnumbering the no votes 77 to 23 percent. This means it will make it more difficult for future legislatures to enact a personal income tax in the state. And Proposition 7 passed overwhelmingly with 73% of voters voting yes and 27% voting no. This constitutional amendment will allow for increased distributions to the available school fund, which means the raising of the amount of money available for funding classroom materials in the state. We are on the cusp of flu season, and after a surge in vaping-related illnesses, medical experts are warning patients that the two illnesses could combine in a potentially fatal way. The effects of vaping and the symptoms of the flu are so similar it's dangerous. Symptoms like coughing, shortness of breath, nausea, and chest pains can be misdiagnosed as just the flu. If someone with the flu has a habit of vaping, their complication risk increases. Pediatrician Dr. Deborah Greenhouse says the flu can make kids very, very sick. The flu can be a fatal illness. If you throw the potential for this vaping-related illness on top of that, it becomes even more frightening. Last night, 84 Northwest students were inducted into National Honor Society. The annual induction happened in the Performing Arts Center at 6 p.m. Students have worked hard to get invited to be inducted into the organization, so join us and congratulations to all, to all NHS inductees. And speaking of National Honor Society, NHS TV reporter Clarissa Rodriguez is out on Main Street with NHS historian Mariah Maldonado to give you more information about it. Clarissa? Hey guys, I'm here with Mariah Maldonado. So can you tell us a little bit about National Honor Society? Yeah. So National Honor Society is a club that focuses on character, leadership, scholarship, and service. So um, I know that you have to like maintain like good grades throughout mm -hmm. the year to get invited. What are those grades? So you have to have a 3.6 unweighted GPA and a 4.0 weighted to be able to be invited. Okay, and what are some of, of like the benefits of it after? So it looks very good on college applications. You get a lot of community service hours and you gain a lot of friendships. All right, back to you anchors. Oh, that was so bad. Thanks, Clarissa. If you have any other questions about National Honor Society, visit Ms. Wade in room 102 or Ms. Compton in room 103. Moving on, traveling to 37 countries before the age of 16 is a big accomplishment. But little do you know, a member of our Texan staff did just that. NHS TV reporter Mari Flakes has the story. For those who are not in wrestling, football, or AP World history, you might not be familiar with the name Coach Shields. And if you do know him, there's a chance you might not be aware of what got him started as a staff member here at Northwest High School. Starting at a young age, him and his family traveled to 37 different countries before he was 16 years old. Being able to walk around a city that's several thousand years old and seeing castles and Roman ruins and whatnot just down the street from your house was a pretty cool experience. Seeing this history up front and personal inspired him to learn more about the history and become a teacher. Living in Portugal for five years, he started teaching at an international school and coaching an American football team. At this school, he taught 11 different nationalities in every subject from seventh grade to seniors. 
While he was there, he also met his wife who came back to America with him. After he got back, he started teaching again. He enjoys teaching history since most students don't know much about it. Being able to see and make those connections is, is a cool experience and I think it's important for them to learn that. Coach Shields spends most of his time teaching and coaching and is always willing to help his students. Even if history is not one of your strong suits, he is always trying new ways to engage his students in learning new things. This has been Mari Flakes with NHS TV. Today's French Appreciation Week theme is science and technology. Today's question is, from where do the French launch their rockets? The first student to correctly answer the trivia question wins the prize. Please see Madam White in room 604 for your chance to win. And now for a new segment on NHS TV, this is Embarrassing Teacher Moments. My most embarrassing teacher moment was we were, one of my classes won a competition to have a popcorn party. So that day I brought in microwave popcorn and I went into the little hallway and put it in the microwave and I just put a number in without thinking and I start to smell it and it's not good. I don't know why I did this. If I could go back in time, this would be the one thing that I would change in my life is that I hit the button to open up the microwave and yellow smoke came out yellow smoke came out. It was so nauseating. Nobody wanted to eat popcorn. We couldn't be in the room. Three weeks, it smelled so bad in there. Admin would come down the hall and be like, what, what lab is this? And, and the whole time, anybody that I told that story to, they'd be like, uh, did you know there was a popcorn button on the microwave? Yeah, so <laughs> I'm actually a really good cook. <laughs> Thanksgiving and Christmas fall fairly close to each other, which leaves us with the question, which holiday is better? We asked you as they go head to head on this week's Texans on Main Street. Okay, so I know that like November just started, hi guys, <laughs> but I'm ready for Christmas, so I'm gonna get your guys' opinion. Are you guys ready for Thanksgiving or for Christmas? So which do you prefer, Christmas or Thanksgiving? Christmas. And then why is that? Uh, Christmas is the most wonderful time of the year. It's wonderful time. Which do you prefer, Christmas or Thanksgiving? Christmas. Okay, so are you ready for Christmas now or are you going to skip right over Thanksgiving? I'm going to skip over Thanksgiving for sure. Thanksgiving. Why is that? Non-negotiable for my family. We all get together every year for Thanksgiving. Okay, so which do you prefer, Christmas or Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving. Christmas. Christmas is so much better than Thanksgiving because you also get to eat and you get presents. And we also have a tournament. So which do you prefer, Christmas or Thanksgiving? Christmas, all the way. Christmas. Ah, oh, when did you guys start arguing? Okay. Everything kind of runs together in my family, you know? Like, we go celebrate Thanksgiving and then we eat turkey and stuff. Then we go home, we decompress for a little bit, and then BAM! Christmas hits you like a freight train. Congratulations to our Lady Tetson volleyball team for a great season. The Lady Tetsons took on Birdville last night but lost a heartbreaker three sets to two sets. Also remember that hats and hoods are still not allowed in the building. If you wear one, like that guy in Texans on Main Street, it will be taken up by teachers and administrators. Also, holes and rips in your pants above mid-thigh for both girls and guys are out of dress code. So let's be sure to stay in dress code, Texans. Tomorrow we have another furry friend in need of a new home. Thanks for joining us. This has been NHS TV Live.